These 1985 Donruss baseball cards were the bottom of the barrel. Er, bucks. By the spring of 1985, it seemed like baseball cards were everywhere, but it wasn't enough. Collectors wanted more, more, and more. For the most part, the big three card companies were happy to indulge our excesses. And soon we found ourselves awash in minis, pewters, highlight sets, box sets, traded and update sets, 3D cards, stickers, pins and buttons, food cards, police cards, at the ballpark cards, and just about any other insert adjective here cards you can think of. But for all the places we could find our cardboard treasures, there was still one place we couldn't, at least not as far as most collectors could remember. That esoteric location on the bottom of our baseball card boxes. No, not our 800 count silo boxes or our 3200 count monster boxes made of crush resistant corrugated cardboard. We could have taped hey, cards to the bottom of those babies anytime we wanted. I'm talking about the bottoms of the display boxes that manufacturers use to hawk their goods, in particular boxes of wax packs. For years, Topps, Fleer, and Donruss had used the tops of their boxes to tempt us with the samples of what this year's cards looked like, but no one paid attention to the bottom of the boxes. Those boxes were, after all, just vehicles for moving cards from place to place, and for keeping packs nicely aligned while sitting there waiting for our hungry little hands to pick them up. Not a long wait, usually. In 1985, though, Donruss read the market like your mom can read your guilty expressions. Seeking to capitalize on the momentum created by their landmark 1984 set, punctuated by that gigantic Don Manningly rookie card, Donruss expanded their real estate footprint, claiming land that had lay fallow throughout the modern hobby years. Yes, you could find 1985 Donruss baseball cards on the bottom of their wax boxes that year. Not just rehashes of base cards, either. These were brand new cards created just for box bottoms. There were four cards in all, each of them included on every wax box of 1985 Donruss cards. Here is the complete checklist. Dwight Gooden, number PC1. Ryan Sandberg, number PC2. Ron Kittle, number PC3. Lou Gehrig, puzzle, unnumbered. The goal here, of course, was to encourage collectors to purchase a full box to ensure that they'd get box bottom premiums. It was pretty powerful candy, too. I can remember my car dealer friend, Beulah, selling a box of 1985 Donruss to me, and my dad mostly, by pointing to the box bottoms and saying, and of course you get four good guys. Sold! After all, how else could I get those limited edition cards? They were going to be worth a fortune. Looking back, there were some flaws in my logic. Consider, Dwight Gooden was indeed a good guy, but that turned out to be fairly short-lived. Ryan Sandberg was indeed a good guy, and in 1984, he was the National League MVP. And he got a bit flaky in the 1990s, though, and wasn't a huge market driver after the mid-1980s. Ron Kittle was indeed a good guy in 1983. By 1985, we'd pretty much figured out that he was Dave Kingman, light. Lou Gehrig may have been the ultimate good guy, but his box bottom cards were a weird miniature version of the Pettis Steel Hall of Fame Diamond King puzzle you could put together by buying enough packs. The cards weren't really scarce. While you weren't guaranteed to get a copy of any particular single card from the base Donra set, even if you bought a whole wax box, you were guaranteed to get one of each of the box bottom cards. The cards were made from the same mushy brown cardboard as the box itself. Very topsy. The cards were part of the display box and subject to all the wear and tear that entailed. If you liked your cards with scuffs, creases, and occasional pricing stickers, then this was right up your alley. A lot of retail stores were happy to give you the empty box or let you have it if you bought a few packs. Of course, it was great to have more cards and to have different cards of good guys, even if they weren't good forever or as good as we thought and the condition problems make these cards pretty interesting today. For instance, you can usually find the full panel for well under $10 on eBay, but graded singles in mint condition can bring three figures or more. Of course, all the monetary arguments are moot when it comes to the 1985 Donruss box bottom baseball cards, and every other baseball card for that matter. If you need a card, you need it. Doesn't matter if it's worth a penny or a mint. Doesn't even matter if it started life as a bottom dweller. Like our video? Then like our video and subscribe to our channel.
waxpackgods.com.